thank you for attending my session. Um, it's interesting to see how AI is changing things for all of us, and um, it's more a conversation. It's not, nobody knows how this is going to take shape, so we will talk a little more of what we understand, what we have seen, what our customers are talking about, what people would really expect, what, what is the real experience of AI? Does it really mean anything to us? So I'm going to talk about future of fusion. When I say this, it's AI is one component of it. Uh, how do we really make sense of AI with uh, experience and storytelling? As designers, as human beings, that we care for other human beings a lot, especially coming from this community, I think we have more responsibilities in this space, in this era, and I think how do we harmonize things together is something that we will talk about a little bit. Um, um, I heard this mic is working. Yeah, it's good. So I'm um, the Chief Experience Officer for Wong Dodi, an Infosys company, and this is Pure Play, an agency, part of Infosys, where we, uh, this agency was bought six years back by Infosys. There was multiple other agencies that was bought in Australia, and uh, you know, London and so on. When everything came together under one name, it was called Wong Dudi, and that's where we are living with the name. Uh, it's actually, the name is a little, always a question, what is Wong Dudi? So it's two people's name. It's uh, the second name of two founders who put their name on the door. Uh, that is, uh, you know, Pat Dudi and uh, Tracy Wong. So that's how the na names have come by. So I have authored a book. Um, in fact, UX India was the launch pad for me for last one of, when I launched this book, it's on Amazon. So um, this is the, the Great Balancing Act, which is more of the real experiences that I have had with how do you balance when you design something, what user expects, again, what you deliver. Uh, ex experience against expectations is something that we've, uh, I've written on it. The next book is coming up, um, hopefully, I'll do it on the 20th year of UX India. <clears throat> this is what the team's uh, awards are. We have won close to 300 plus industry awards for design. And we believe in this a lot because once some of the jury across the regions, of, across the global juries accept our work and say we have done some good job, is actually the proof that we are doing something right. So this is like 300 plus of awards and, and the best of IF design, red dots, all of that are part of our forte. So let's talk about the topic today. It's more of uh, uh, what's, what's the future looking like and what is this fusion future all about. Um, so the, the pure play of uh, the alchemy of innovation only when, as I said, the convergence of AI and when the storytelling comes in, when a clear experience is also thought. And when I say storytelling, a lot of us, a lot of us confuse that we need to write a nice script, which today ChatGPT can do. Uh, it's not so, but it's more of what uh, what is a physical experience and a digital experience, and how a seamless experience can be developed for brands. And what does the brand experience mean? What is the emotion we carry as a person when we look at a brand, when we experience a brand, and when we move, when we traverse between brands, and so on? Uh, and within the same brand, when you're on a digital or an offline or a store, what is your typical experience? And that's the story the brand is telling a person. And that's an evoking an emotion. And that emotion is something that we are talking about today. <clears throat> so it's a, definitely AI is a shape shifter for a lot of uh, different industries. Like we you know, we'll talk about some of the use cases on different industries. So we've seen the silver screen revolution. Uh, already you can see in movies how the silver screen is working and the green screen works. And we have a lot of uh, use cases within Wong Dudi that we are working with our customers as well. Uh, and we mainly focus on digital twin. Like if you have a new car coming up, even before it is out in the market, at the concept level, we build it on a 3D uh, Maya with actual data preparation. And it is to scale. If you print those models, it will actually print an actual car in the size, like 3D printing. And every, every part of the car is so well looked at. And it is also with the data prep that if the steering turns to the right, all the parts do turn to the right. So that's that how a car really works is something that we digitally prepare it. And that is not just used for the manufacturing of the, by, by the OEMs, it is also used by a lot of ad campaigns. So most of the CMO offices have reached out saying, we spend millions on ads. 
we have to take artists, go to the Amsterdam, wait for um, the sunset and shoot a nice video for a campaign. Today we can do with large LED as creating those 3D environments what we need and actually the car which is not, not even manufactured as a sample and have the artist play around in the, in the green screen. So all of this put together it is hyper realistic. And most of you, I'm sure, when you look at today's ads and you will not even realize what is real, what is video, what is 3D. So it's really reached that level of accuracy. And it takes a lot of time, especially with OEMs. Trust me when I say this, we've been bidden up for 40 months by OEMs for pixel perfection. And we get, we get to their rules and regulations and following those. It, it's very difficult when, we, when you have to achieve, uh, you can achieve 99%. That 1% is very big challenge mostly. <clears throat> so again, we, there, is, there is beyond human experiences. Today, even on virtual games, if there is no real partners to come and play, based on your experiences, how much, you, what level you would like to play, the system will automatically give you those kind of users to play with. So that's uh, automated systems today, it's all AI is enabling you to do those, uh, those stuff. But really, do you want to play with machines? That's a different question. <clears throat> And language, you know, I've, I've dealt with customers long time back when they were saying, I need my website in 14 languages. I need my portal in, uh, in multiple languages, in different languages. Today, it's not a big deal. Then we had to develop it. We had to think through languages. We need a translation company to help us understand how, how Japanese work, how Chinese work, and so on. Today, it's all on the fly, and it, it eases out. So <clears throat> it's definitely looking, looking forward to see how languages can uh, ease out and it will automatically give you the preferences of what is your language, where do you come from and what do you like to see. So we had seen Matrix movies and we have enjoyed that, oh is this real and it's more fantasy. Today it is all real, so you know from all the sky fi's it is moving to realistic uh, ways and this is going to happen even in the future. Uh, autonomous cars, all of that was just spoken today, it's already there. Uh, a lot of things are happening around those and AI is really doing, ma majorly it's playing on OEMs as well. And on healthcare industry also, there is lots that's happening. Today, uh, especially analyzing people or even knowing before uh, what is the problem that is going to come and how it is going to affect the person with the certain lifestyle, certain habits that, how do you change habits, habit formation, uh, unlearning some habits and so on. So there is lots that you get to tweak yourself based on AI, which is good, which is definitely helpful. At the same time, it really predicts when you can die. <laughs> so a lot of other aspects of multi-sensories and you know, there is a lot of multi-sensory symphony, emotional resonance and, and cultural stuff. You know, today we all, when, um, how many of you have gone to Humpy here? Excellent. So most of you would have seen, if you take a guide there, he will tell you here is where we had a sandalwood door and we had all gold laid doors, blah, blah, all of that. But can we really experience it? Today you can. So that, that's how the, the new 3D world, AI, and what do you like to experience? What do you like? And using the sensories. If you walk in, if he's saying it's a sandalwood door, can you smell sandalwood? <clears throat> So if, if something like those sensory mixed realities can come together and actually uh, with AI, what you like to see in Humpy, did you like the action in the wars or did you like how it happened, what happened there, who was the kings or do you like the costumes that they were wearing. So based on your preferences, it can actually um, celebrate the uh, cultural nuances there. <clears throat> so it's more of AI and you. All of us, I mean, all the companies today, if you see, everybody is rushing to do something with AI. Just let's automate something. We'll, we'll have to call ourselves, we are AI ready today, we know AI. But as designers, let's look at it very, very honestly and say, it's AI and us together, right? It's, it's only a tool that can help your story fast. You can think better, you can dream more. You can sell more dreams to users that can be reality. It need not have to be a physical thing that is available, but you can definitely make it happen with AI. So it is really helping your story better. So story is yours. <clears throat> and this is what I was saying. It's more a friend, more an ally. Uh, let's not look at it something. 
Um, at least in the room, I'm sure there is a varied experience uh, of experience design and so on. We have seen a lot of hype cycles. This is one of them again. And we will, we will get over this again. We will see um, how, again, storytelling experiences will be prominent. But AI will definitely change the way we do things. That's, I'm not saying it's not going to disrupt. It is going to. And, and creativity becomes um, a very important. How do we amplify our imaginations? Like I said, you can dream more, sell, sell more. Personalization, we were struggling. How do we make, make sure each individual can get better around this, how, how, can, how can I give the person what exactly they need is something that we can achieve easily today. And conversational, again, talk to it more. The more you explore, the more you find it easier. Uh, it's, not, it's, not gonna, you know, it's not a rocket science. And again, um, from a life centricity, again, from a, lot of, from a long time, hum, as humans, we've been a little selfish. Uh, we've been doing human-centric design, user-centric design, but we've never thought of the life around us. There is a lot of other living beings around us, and that's when the sustainability concepts and how do we make it eco-friendly, nature, all of it has really kicked up, and we are really taking care of those with every projects that we do very strongly on sustainability and so on. Uh, and all the ESG metrics that is required for the companies will be taken care of. We make sure that we, uh, we, we are doing something good to the world back when we, when we design. Uh, that's for, even for personal satisfaction per se. So as we speak, <clears throat> there is always a thin line. I mean, I would, I would like to quote this uh, one taxi driver conversation. Um, this was, a, uh, I, I hired a lift in Boston. The guy was driving me. And he said, where, where are you from? What do you do? We got introduced. And he said, OK, technology. You guys talk about so many things in technology, some new things, robotics, blah, blah, blah. Can I sit at home and watch Netflix? And can robots go work for me and feed my family? Can we get there? I mean, it changed my whole perspective of all of this. Oh, does it really make a difference to human beings' life? Can we change their lives? I mean, end of the day, uh, you know, if, if it is if it is some kind of a differently abled people or disabilities that come up, can, can an affordable solution be thought through that can make it happen? Uh, we can think of solutions, they're still expensive. Uh, we are talking about autonomous cars, SFO, it blocked the whole lane where ambulances were stuck. Uh, today it is still not there. We, we kind of agree that we are, uh, we, are still, we are still not there, but it can get anywhere only with people like us who can build the right stories, make it more comprehensive, make it more real, bring it to the cost effectiveness, and make sure it is used by people who are for, with a purposeful use. So the fine line is definitely there is a lot of ethical dilemmas. Um, you know, as companies, large companies at least, we are not sure how much can we deliver out of an AI-generated stuff. It could be content, it could be images. We don't know if, it, if there is clearly a copyright issue, if there is, and it has a, uh, is it all clear of biases? Uh, does it take care of, um, you know, all of the images that uses is all copyright free and so on? So there's so many dilemmas and, and also it, it, uh, there is a lo loss of authenticity and so on. So we need to make sure uh, an abstraction works more than extraction because uh, you know it's uh, sorry extraction works more than abstraction because we have we have our own databases if we are pulling out stuff from that and asking ai to mix and match and bring up some intelligence within that works easier but if we ask it to go out in the web and build something then we are still at a risk to deliver anything we can't contractually get into any of this can banks use this I mean, there is a there is a very simple uh, you know term which which says how much of technology can be used and how much humans have to be there. Would you want an AI bot standing near um, an emergency medical uh, medicine? I mean, emergency medicine place uh, when there is some emergency, would you want to talk to a machine or a human being? I mean, even in claims, right? We've we've been using those. Uh, when you travel out, uh, the company can give you, based on AI, all the best fitting flight, and you can choose what flights you love to go on, and this is cost effective, we can give you. You would love that experience. The moment you come back, when you're submitting all of the bills, and it is, uh, the AI is automatically calculating, and this is how much you should get. And if there is a discrepancy between what you, should, you are actually supposed to claim and what is there, you would definitely want to speak to a human being there. So there is always a difference. There is always a fine line of where you want to uh, make the differentiation. So this ethical 
loom of uh, I'm clearly weaving the AI as a responsibility. I mean, it's more uh, our responsibility to make sure we are, uh, our people are safe, our users are trusting something that what we build for them. And of course, it's a transparent algorithms, and this is what this is where we need to head towards with fairness and being being quite fair on all sorts of bias asserting care and any um, any um, user protection, data protection, accountability, and so on. Uh, or if the hospital systems and all become AI and it starts giving out data to mix and match for something else, you would definitely not feel safe yet. So we have to kind of make sure that how do we make 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 users feel safe around us. <clears throat> And, and trust me, I would like to, I would love to use one of your case studies going forward if, I mean, if, if it comes up, something to say, um, you know, AI was used, but people are very happy. They felt secure. They felt, they trusted. And any design agency can challenge today and say, I will build something that is safe for you. And I don't think anybody can challenge today. But if you can, if you can find a way to do it, you will be on everybody's case study. technical glitch yeah it's working <clears throat> so let's look at some of the pioneers what they're doing uh, this is more disney and uh, disney started curating stuff and giving uh, experiences in their uh, you know if you go to their um, play areas and if you go into different zones of disney you know, they have started giving you the experiences that is meaningful for you and what you would like to play with, what is that, what exact arenas would you like to go. So that is something Disney is already working on uh, big time. And also, yeah, so I'm sure Netflix, everybody knows, uh, it's, it curates exactly the content that you need. Um, and uh, and we, can, we can expect what we like and suggestions what we, we may want to try based on our personality. Again, if you look at uh, Spotify, uh, curating music, giving exactly the experiences, what you would like, and uh, how, how people would play with on, on different, and autonomous cars. We are talking about, again, uh, Tesla. And, and trust me, when you start using Tesla, at least for two, three months, uh, and when you come back to any of the other cars, your senses have all kind of um, evolved into expecting everything the car will do it. Right, so AI and autonomous have really reached that point that you know you will start losing your own senses. You will start depending on the car for everything, and it, it does on its own. Yeah, while you'll enjoy because you will get more time back to you. You will have more productive time to do something better than actually spending time on um, you know making sure your car is on the right path and making sure the objects are identified and so on. But still, you lose those senses over time. Yeah, NASA again, a uh, lot of data. Uh, how does actually Mars feel like? What is the data? How is the uh, materials there? What density it is? Those can, re AI really helps simulate those and understand those data better, uh, en encrypt those better. Of course, Amazon, um, it, it has a very AI-powered customer services. Some of, the, uh, some of them are really done well. <clears throat> Nike and Today, products, you can wear them in seat without even buying. You can actually, looking at your feet, what suits you, looking at your personality, what you would like, and what colors will suit you, what are the suggestions from the best of the fashionist, uh, what, what works for you. All of this is Nike is really working on holographic images on your feet and so on. So things will move on for sure. So it's definitely your turn. Like I said, the experience matters with what story you build and how you can use AI meaningfully. Uh, that's, that's the um, point I wanted to make. So, yeah, so AI still needs compassion, and that comes only from the designers. So compassion has to come from your stories, your designs, and uh, how you will think uh, the AI will work best for human beings. So that's more of what I had open for questions. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I am Raj Shekhar. Uh, please throw some light on the recent uh, strike happening in the Hollywood industry. I think you are aware of that. Like, script writers are very worried about the AI and… Uh, yes, I think majority of the CEOs are also signing up against AI. Right. It is only to draw a line. They also want to make sure that you draw a fine line. I think that's, that's, that's what people are not thinking of. People are just deploying AI and want to make it AI ready, AI first, AI approached, we are AI company, all of this. But this is the point where it is leading uh, beyond human beings to say, okay, we have to draw a line for sure. And I think most of these movements of strike and CEO signing the uh, against AI and all of that is definitely coming to draw that line. I think the strike is over just few days ago, but the first hit has been to the script writers and storytellers in this country. Absolutely. In the world. <coughs> yeah. I, I think script writers have to slowly see… This is like… This is the point where I was… Uh, I would say that when uh, horse riders started thinking, no, 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 my jobs will go off when cars come, they have to learn driving. Right. So, there is a shift of learning for sure, but there is nothing like the jobs will go away. There is new jobs get, that will get created. Uh, I mean, again, so from a script writing, the responsibility of AI, how you would write those prompts and what exactly do you want to extract for a story that you would take. There's a lot of responsibilities that the role changes rather than just writing. So the writing chat GPT will take care today. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you have a question there? Hi, uh, Hi, the presentation was so nice, so wonderful. Thank Thanks you. for all your insights. So I just have three questions. One question you already answered, which is this. This is also possible. And my second question is, is the large audience... You have some magnetic field with you. Is the large audience is ready for this, this drastic change of AI. For example, my when the HDFC changed their uh, ATM UI, my uncle struggled and he, his cord got stuck. We struggle to get the ATM card again, so that's the that that is there. So this AI is drastic. Will the large audience accept this? They will also follow this. Is there any way that you foresee? And my third question is: uh, Are we ready for the downfall of AI? So whenever there's a new technology comes in, the you know new partnership comes in. For example, CMS comes in, WordPress and all of that, and then e-com and then NFT. And then, uh, what do you call it, like crypto, all had a downfall. Yep. Similarly, AI will have a downfall. So, are we ready for all those things? So, I think uh, for the first question of is large audience going to accept, right? Uh, for the, from the large audience perspective, it is a slow evolution. Once you start getting used to little by little, you'll get used to it. That's how, you know, you manage the crowd when you want to get them used to something new. So that is going to take time and it, it is going to evolve. Like I said, if, if a new sword is in the best warrior's hand, the fight will be good. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the same example that you said, uh, the horse rider had to learn car when yes. it comes. But the audience has to learn how to watch a car. For example, if i watching rally, I will understand rally. But the, mo the moment I switch to F1, entire concept is changing. Correct. So I'm more focused on this audience level, that's why. Yeah, it's how they get used to it. I think it's evolving and it's uh, again in the hands of the designers to take them through a slow transition, not threaten them with the new change, slowly make the changes. If somebody is doing a HDFC change, if you were the designer, you would not drastically go ahead and change for people. I mean, do you still want to use the old one? Google does it well. You know, Google says, do you want to have a beta version or you still want to go back to the old one? We are fine. You can just get used to it slowly. So that's how the best mechanism to move us into the new uh, ones. What was your second question, sorry? Downfall of AI. Downfall. Downfall, uh, the blockchain, if, if the, again, if the system works, if it is really useful for people, it won't have a downfall. And as I said, it's how you use it, how you build the stories, how it is useful, meaningful for people. If it is something I start depending in my life on it, then obviously it will not fall. Otherwise it will. Alright, any other questions or?
I guess we are good. Thank you so much. Thank you.